Andy Caldwell, One Minute Out. I wanna to talk to you about proper presentation of your pistol from the draw. And this you know, can be whether it's an appendix, carry and concealment, or you're at the range with your range gear. You know, the fundamentals are all the same. So let's cover them and go over what the ideal draw is and how you want to get this done. You know, every situation is gonna be different, may not be perfect, but let's always practice the perfect scenario so that when things go awry, we still know what we need to do. All right, so for this situation here, I've got just an outside the waistband CNG holster with my Walther PDP. And the first thing that I wanna do anytime that I draw my pistol, whether that's you know with my firing hand or with a support hand only, um, I wanna make sure that I get a good grip on the pistol from the holster. So this kind of webbing portion of our hand in between our thumb and our pointer finger, right? that's where I wanna come down on the pistol. And I want to be as high up on the dovetail or the beaver tail, whatever you want to call it, but I want to be as high up on the pistol as I can. That's going to help me control recoil, all right? Because it's just, it's physics. The higher up I can get on the gun as the gun is trying to recoil, all right, that gives it less movement. If I, my grip was way down here, obviously then there's a lot more movement in play that the pistol can have. So first off, foremost, we want to make sure when we come down and draw, we get as high as we can. So a high purchase, we call it on the pistol. So as I do that, right, I come down onto the pistol, I'm gonna wrap my fingers around the grip and my, my trigger finger is alongside the holster, right? My thumb is along the backside to help clear and push the holster away. Now, when I draw the pistol out, I wanna come straight up with the pistol. My holster is straight up and down, don't fight physics, all right? I wanna draw straight up to get the pistol out and cleared from the holster. My next movement is I wanna bring the pistol into what I call like my workspace or my ready position. So the pistol comes up here where I have my support hand. Now we're meeting my support hand so that now I can complete my grip. All right, I want the best grip possible on this pistol, the most stable grip, so that it's gonna help me control recoil and get the pistol out onto the target or at the threat as quick as I can. So as I come into this workspace area, okay, straight up, I come into the workspace, I meet my, my support hand, Okay, you can have your thumb sort of pointed right towards the target, but I'm gonna, I like to come up underneath the trigger guard with my fingers as that reference point, and I start to wrap my fingers, I right, interlace them around, and if you look on the pistol, as I grip with this hand, I've got this opening on the pistol, on the lower. That's where I want the meaty portion of this hand to be. So as I bring this hand in, I wrap my fingers, I bring that in, I've got a bunch of hand so i've got a lot of meat on the actual pistol all right if your hand is too far forward or too far back or too far up then you, you're not covering this area which again is going to make the pistol recoil a little bit more it's going to be harder to manage those follow-on shots so as i wrap my fingers around i get my the palm of that hand onto the pistol all right my thumbs what are my thumbs doing my firing thumb is just up and relaxed because this hand all it's doing is just holding the pistol. My finger is not on the trigger yet. It's still alongside, but this hand is just gripping and just holding the pistol. That's all it's doing. I'm not applying a bunch of pressure with this hand because I need this finger to stay relaxed. All right. If you have a really tight grip with your firing hand, then as you go to squeeze the trigger, you're more likely going to be more tense. So you're going to end up pushing the pistol off target or kind of pushing down on the pistol. All right. We don't want that to happen. All of my grip is with this hand right here. All right, the best way to explain it is hold the pistol with this hand and absolutely crush it, all right, with this hand, okay? Even if you think you're given enough grip, give a little bit more, all right? So as we come up and meet, I wrap around, all my grip is with this support hand, all right? This thumb is alongside of the slide. You can see on my Walther, I've got a little bit of a, like a data plate right here. That can become a good reference point of where my thumb will just rest on that lower, all right? And it's kind of, they're pointed towards the target so that that wrist is locked out, which again is gonna help give me a great position on the pistol to help control the recoil. So as I wrap around, all right, thumb is in its reference point. This thumb is up and relaxed. Now I brought the pistol into that workspace to complete the grip. Hey, I can automatically 
pick up my front sight right from here, which is key because now my front sight is pointed towards the threat or towards the target, right? Once I've completed that grip and I start to push the pistol out, my trigger finger can now move to the trigger because my pistol is pointed at the threat or at the target. So if I'm ready to shoot, I can start to shoot from here and I know where my rounds are going. They're not, may not be bullseyes and dead on where I need to be because I don't have all my sights lined up yet, but I'm generally right there on target. So the finger moves to the trigger. As I start pushing the pistol out, all right, I start prepping the trigger, taking the slack out. Now, once I get to, and it's not a, it's not a full extension, I'm not locking my arms out because then this is creating too much stiffness through here and through our shoulders. We want to be a little bit more relaxed here. And then all of the grip and everything that we're doing is going to make our, from our, basically our elbow out a little bit more tense. Okay. So as I push the pistol out, I try to keep my elbows a little bit low and bent, try to keep those shoulders relaxed. All right. I prep, take the slack out of the trigger. I let my sights line up. All right. And my eyes are at the threat. Okay. You can still see your sights as you're pushing that pistol out. I don't need to, in any type of a close or rapid firing situation, really focus much on my sights. All right. With lots of practice and lots of range time, I can still see my sights. So as I push out, I can see front sight, front sight, but I'm looking at that threat. My eyes need to be at the threat as I push the pistol out. All right. Prep the trigger. So once I get to near full extension, good bend to my elbows, my shoulders are relaxed. All right. Trigger's already prepped. I can go ahead and fire when I'm ready, everything looks good, all right? Or I need to quickly eliminate that threat. With proper presentation, proper grip, I'm able to quickly get the pistol out there, control recoil to have accurate follow-on shots and eliminate that threat, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at what this is gonna look like at full speed, all right, engaging the threat. All right, so at speed, what we're doing again is good grip, bring the pistol up into my workspace to complete my grip, Crush it with this hand, all right? Just hold the pistol with this hand, push out, start prepping the trigger, line my sights up, all right? Engage till I eliminate that threat. Once the threat's eliminated, I can come back into my center position, all right? This way, if I had to move or do anything else, I'm ready to just push back out. Or if the threat's eliminated, now I can look and holster, all right? So this is what it should look like. Look holster. Obviously the threat's eliminated. So every time we holster, get in and build that good practice of looking, ensuring that we get the pistol right into the holster and there's no obstructions in there. All right. There you have it. That simple.